TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, so 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 that, but that, but that. You can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. I'm gonna edit that out. You know, we all mess up. We won't see my mess up stuff. Um, HMP, Birmingham, Life Inside. HMP, is this the one we just did? Nah, that was a psych ward. Okay, I got this requested a lot too. And it's been in my watch later for a long time, so here we go. It's a really happy day in the of Birmingham. Time, gentlemen, please. Lots of time. Because this is the world of 17 governors, 600 officers, and 37 healthcare staff, all working in one of Britain's largest jails. <laughs> Tonight, you're about to be banged up in Her Majesty's Prison, Birmingham, also known as Winston Green. Oh, Winston Green, okay. The doctor away. What is a flu and a crisis? Crisis is this? I'm doing a series right now on my channel also. It's, um... Uh, benefits benefits series they always talk about this one most of us avoid prison, prison at all costs but these people have chosen to be locked up with some of the most dangerous crims <laughs> in the country it's hard work working for the queen don't you think and her majesty has more inmates at her pleasure than ever before so this is how the staff at Winston Green cope with being penned in for up to 14 hours a day with 1,400 inmates including joyriders, murderers, drug dealers and sex offenders. That's a prison. That's a crime. Hey, dramatic as hell, man. A criminal by their very nature is never going to be the easiest person to deal with. So the officers and nurses at Winston Green have their work cut out on a daily basis. It's now next sort that you get in there. This is an institution where the most untrustworthy and unpredictable elements of society are put together. I know y'all can hear the video clearly, but it's like low for me. I don't know. Over oh. seventy percent of inmates have men. Only got one ear on. <laughs> mental health or addiction problems and their well-being <coughs> is still paramount despite being in prison so for the healthcare team and prison officers who look after the inmates and keep order it's one hell of a tough gig it's a typical prison officer's stance but you can be viewing what's happening downstairs but you're also watching what's happening around you as well yes fellas all right i'll send him up Julie Turton is the prison's suicide prevention officer. Stressing. That's it. Now she does excellent. Julie's in her 40s and brought up four kids before she joined the prison service nine years ago. Her first 12 months on the job were a baptism of fire, dealing with two hangings and nearly 100 self-harm incidents. Damn. I've had my moments, believe me. I've had my moments here, but nobody sees that. You've got to walk around and smile. Julie's always smiling, so Julie's always all right. Hello, sex god. <laughs> Birmingham hasn't seen a death in custody for 12 months, but if a prisoner really wants to commit suicide, he'll always find a way. So Julie's job is to try and second guess the most vulnerable. Why are, they, why are they trying to make this fun the back with the background music? What the hell? They're really wild now. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. How you doing? I'm all right. What's happened in here? I just strip searched. You've just been searched? Yeah. So I just tied my pad back up. Uh, Can I sit down on the chair? Anything that you shouldn't have? Nah. No. Uh, somebody just said you had to steady and took off you then? Yeah. Julie's known Patrick Bills for the past four years. A schizophrenic self-harmer, Bills also has two young children. He's been in and out of jail since he was a kid. Took off me. So could you have gone over word? Yeah. Because I know the last time I seen you was after you had all your trouble on B-Wing. Yeah, I set fire to my pad on. That was the one, yeah. But you feeling a bit cold that day, were you? <laughs> He's a very difficult character. 
if you catch him on a good day like today, he's very talkative and he's very nice. You catch him on a bad day, and he's not so nice. Let's see. Let, let's see the bad day. I'm so oh, okay. About. It's been a while now. It's like, it's been like a month, month now. I did, I, I did this one. I did that one. Mm. With this, this is that. So. But it takes you when you when you get in that state. It takes you a while to come back down and yeah, calm down again, down it. Yeah. It's, it's just a vicious circle. Right? A cup of tea. No, I'm all right. I've just had a cup of coffee. Thank you. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. You smoke? I was like, I've got some bags in my pocket. You want a cigarette? You sure? Yeah. I'll give you one. Bro, what is going on right now? Is this prison? They're offering cigarettes, they offering smokes. You might as well lay down in this bed and open your legs then. Julie, or whatever your name was. Well, I'm nearly finished, so I don't Thank mind you. you having a cigarette. It, it comes across as an innocent chat, and to hear me just thinks that somebody's concerned and. But I can tell a lot of things because I know what he's like. He certainly looks clean, and I mean, I've seen him in some states where he isn't as clean. So he's, he's obviously looking after his home hygiene and everything, which is all a good sign. I've got two kids out there. Yeah. Okay. That's the thing, uh, you don't uh, want to keep uh, coming backwards and forwards to so him. So this is all strategy. strategy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I want to get made sorted. Thank nice you to much. see you again. It's nice to see you. You look a whole lot better than you did before, believe me. You look at yourself. Yeah, and you. <coughs> Bye. Yeah, my boy talking about you look good yourself. He held her hand for an extra little minute. I seen you. During a cell search, the officers confiscated Bill's You try to let them dimples show. Look. <laughs> Julie to well, try boy. Mr. Bill's has asked if I'd mention to you about his stereo that's been taken off. <laughs> the fact that he had two in his possession, you mean? At 39, Percy Davidson's just got a promotion. So, so this is more like H and P Birmingham Life Inside as the staff. Is that like maybe the just beginning part is for the staff? <laughs> He's a senior nurse managing part of the 37 strong healthcare team and the well being of. He's a senior nurse managing part of the 30. Shout out to the LBGT community. I just want to say that. After I've watched this right here, he's a senior nurse managing part That's of the 37 strong guess, healthcare team and the well being of 1,400 prisoners. But it doesn't look like the word stress appears in Percy's dictionary. We also offer things like acupuncture, also offer things like herbal teas. Even when he's rushed off his feet, he's still laid right back. I think you only have about 20 minutes to do it. So the last thing he needs is prisoners playing up. Can I help? Apparently, you're the man who's going to fit on for his catheter. Oh, Hi, sir. Prisoner Stuart Humphreys has an addiction to visiting the nurse. To get his fix of Percy, he keeps pulling out the catheter he's had fitted for his prostate problem, and Nursey isn't happy. I'm free, in Jesus' name. I warn you in front of the officer, in front of the crew, the next time you take it out, yeah. I'm not putting the team back. The eyes not so uh, uh, He said, you take it out. No, he took it out. I'm not doing it again. What the hell wrong with you? I'm free, I'm gonna do the gel now. Yo. Oh my god, wait, 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 wait a minute, are they showing this? No, you can't really see it, okay. Why Percy playing with that man tally whacker like that? Like, put the, put the catheter in there. Put the catheter in the tally whacker so he can go back to the... To the to the to the to the to the landing. Where does it hurt, mate? Oh. Well, yeah, I said, Mr. 
that many. I'll laugh. I'll have to say nothing. I'll just ask if it hurts. Why can't I push in the catheter now? This is the fourth time Percy's had to fit Humphreys with a new catheter. Hey, oh, fuck a failure you over here, mate. And you didn't even be. Right, it's successful. Humphrey, I'm warning again. Do not. Listen to me in normal English I now. I talk in the Queen language now. Do not. Take it out. Yeah. Right. You okay now? Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> The music is not making this any less funnier. I'm not even gonna... Gonna... <laughs> 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 be copywritten out the ass, man. Forty-one-year-old. Why they do her like this? If the ain't Jemima, you know what? Macintosh has been a prison nurse for three years. A true Brummy, she's married with three children. Glennis is one of Percy's closest friends. I'd much rather be on a Caribbean island. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? But I'm here in HMP Birmingham. It's still all right, the sun's shining. A prisoner is called for help on B-Wing, which holds everyone from violent criminals to tax evaders. It's a real jamboree bag, with no sweeties. You never know what you're going to get. Is that self harm my Purcell? Okay. He just cut his face. Yeah, come on. We have, we have to dress his face and yeah, well, then, yeah. You have to get the bag and sort out his face. They cut, cut his face? Neck, wrist, whatever. They cut up. I'll take him down to be fair, just touch up his face for him. That can we see it? Really low to know that a, a human being can do this to himself. You know what I mean? When we're about saving life then, you know? Self-mutilation can become an addiction too. Prisoner Peter Winnery is a frequent self-harmer, but this is the first time Glennis or Percy have had to deal with him. What's the problem? I'm depressed. You're depressed? Yeah. Did you take your medication? Yeah, yeah. I've tried to talk to a doctor. Well, what does the doctor do? Does yeah, but, but he was know? saying he could have talked to somebody who was right there to support him. I've talked to many people, but they don't want to know. You've talked to me in the past, haven't you? Well, no, but, you know, so, it's so can I talk to you? Mm -hmm. I don't want to bring my problems onto them. Huh? I don't think they've got enough Yeah, but it's so and you just talk well. Yeah, but I think they've got enough to do. Will you give us part <coughs> So you finish with me now? No, we have to sort out the face. <laughs> Your face is there, we have to sort it out. Pass me the red bag, Percy. That boy got like, Percy got like two, three accents, bald in the one. Coming from me as an American, he has, he has the Caribbean accent, he got the, 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 the English accent, he got, he got, and he got one other accent. <laughs> All right, I'll get that now. Maybe it's just two. Is doing that made you feel any better at all? In myself. Does it help? Yeah. That admission probably means Percy and Glennis will have to patch Winnery up again before he's released. Is this the original music on here or uh, did somebody else do this and add this? Uh... Like, listen to this soundtrack. It makes me like want to go watch Beauty and the Beast or something. 53-year-old Colin Underwood is one of the most senior officers in Winston Green. Years, huh? God, I look gorgeous, don't I? <laughs> He's modest, too, earning a top whack of 30000 a year. One of his daily duties is to round up staff to line the labour route. Thank you. One, two, three. Will you stand still? I'm trying to bloody count you. Every day, prisoners leave their cells to go to the workshops, earning up to £13 a week. That's £676 a year. So, crime really doesn't pay. Jade Yosker 1 instructs all papa stations to send on their prisoners for labour. <laughs> We 
With 500 prisoners on the loose, anything could happen, from punch-ups or a full-blown riot or... I saw something the other night that I haven't seen for a very long time. It was a prisoner coming into custody. Whether it was either drunk prior to coming, knowing he was coming in, two, he'd taken some drugs, or three, he was shit scared. He was vomiting all the way from reception <laughs> to the CD link, and I haven't seen that for a long time. That motherfucker was possessed. He was possessed. I just messed myself here. It's an exorcism. Unbothered the vomiting. Was it Lucy? It's Colin's job to make sure the prisoners behave themselves en route to the workshops. And the prisoners know if they want to mess with Colin, they better be Flash Gordon. Somebody called me in for Ming one day, oh, there's Ming, Ming the Merciless. Yeah, they know where it come from. Go on, folks, have you a couple more, please? It's certainly not true, because everyone knows I'm a very pleasant chap. Come on, fella. When he started in the prison service 29 years ago, it was a different world. Officers were hard nuts with a lock em up and shut em up approach. Mick was the first prison officer I ever met. Oh, that was scary. He was the gate officer when I came to take my test. And I bet he just opened the door and growled. <laughs> Mick, he was, what was he, six foot four. four, six foot four? And he was a, I mean, he's a big man, but he was a big man muscle then. Uh, and in days, we used to wear full uniform, cap, and like the, the flat peak was down here, and I'm sending him a letter. Thank you, guys. And I knocked on the old gate, and he's, he's actually just in, what the fuck? Okay. And I was saying, and I think, well, I think I want to be a prison officer, and I've never seen a prison or a prisoner, prison officer in my life. And that was the first one I met was Michael. Hey, so next, next month, I'm getting my passport I know I said that a thousand times, but next month for real, on the 21st of January, I'm going to the post office and I'm filling out the paperwork and giving them the money to get my passport. So that means I will be in the UK this summer. 2022, TLO himself coming to meet the rest of y'all, coming to meet the gang, man. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I think I'm gonna just go places and then just the day before I go, I'm gonna just tell y'all where I'm going, man. See who show up. <laughs> I'm out. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about I'm out like I'm about to end the video, but yeah, I'm out there is what I'm saying. Birmingham, I'm definitely coming. I don't care what nobody say. Liverpool coming. London, of course, coming. I think we should have cuddle and greets or something. I think that could possibly go down. Yeah, I think you should be the one giving them the cuddle, though. Come to Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> An alarm's gone off on B-Wing. <laughs> Julie's regular, Patrick Bills, has shown the Mr. Hyde uh -oh. to his earlier Dr. Jekyll. He's supposed to be on heavy medication for his mental health problems, but Bills has refused to take his meds for six days. And today, the dam has finally burst. In a paranoid state, He's barricaded himself inside his cell and set fire to it. What? I almost said, how do you even set fire? Like, what do you get to set fire? But like that, you got to understand these prisoners are crafty. They be cooking whole fried burritos, fried eggs. They make a grill out of their bed. They they boil what they got a ways to make fires in there. So let me, that's dumb. <laughs> He was inside of the cell, obviously a bit of smoke inhalation. Officers have gone in and pulled him out, also smoke inhalation, but they don't appear to be that bad. <laughs> appear to be that bad. These are your guards. Look at it. Everybody else coming out of there, just one little cough. Look at this. 
Well, it's ladies. Put your arms through. That's it. Arms through. Think that up. That's it. Just grab hold of his top shoulder. Yeah, there you go. Nice and easy. That's all. That's it. Nice and steady. Yeah. Okay. Not so Nice and steady. Nice and steady. It's important the officers restrain Bills to make sure he doesn't harm himself or them. That's it. Push yourself against the back. Stay against the railings. It's easy for you. Bills is taken to the segregation unit where problem prisoners are kept away from other inmates. <coughs> Sorry. I'll just go in a minute. Sure, he's got no injuries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my duty to take care of the prisoners. While Glennis takes care of Bills, Julie's concerned that this incident will go against him on his record. She wants it noted as a self-harm incident. But the officer oh, okay. who pulled him out of the fire thinks differently. He armed me, he endangered me. Yeah, but it's an act of self-harm because he's endangered himself. The class of self-harm in there was an act of self-harm. The self-harm, is it? Because he was in there, nobody would have gone in, he would have been the only one armed. It's still an act of self-harm, even though it's an act of damage. Okay. It's not the first time Bills has got himself into a mess. Julie's seen it all before. I mean, I've sat down, I've had a cigarette with... You need people like Julie, though, like, when you go out through stuff like this, somebody to go to bat for you, somebody to be on your side when, the, when you can't be on your own side, like, when there's nobody there to defend you. Like, you need people like her. She's the, she's the difference maker in people's lives. I had a cup, cup of tea with him, and he's chatted away, happy as Larry. <laughs> The next day, he self harms. And I could shake him. <laughs> you feel like slapping him. You know, I feel like he's one of my kids. Why have you done it, you know? I don't know how much I like these B-rolls and the dramatizations, like, not, not dramatizations, just, just B-rolls where they play the music and then they flick around and they make it look like all fun and games and shit. <laughs> it's not just prisoners who are vulnerable and need help. The suicide rate amongst prison officers is way above the national average. When more? Above the national average who are vulnerable and need help. The suicide rate amongst prison officers is way above the national average. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, if the numbers are there, that's obviously a fact. But how much of it... No offense, but... Why do I care? You know what I'm saying? You chose that job. You... You went to your computer, you typed in prison officer application, you filled that motherfucker out, you went to three interviews, you took a tour of the area, and you chose to do, you probably went to college a little bit for it. That's your choice. When my friend committed suicide. Why? I was absolutely devastated. Absolutely. I feel guilty that even as close as we were, I feel guilty, I think, well, have I let this man down that he couldn't come and speak to me? Like, don't get me wrong. If anybody's feeling like any type of emotions, who am I to tell you you don't have your reasonings? But, like, there's numbers, there's hotlines, there's people you can always talk to. But it's like, for me, it's like you chose this job, so it's like, okay. After losing his friend and colleague, Colin knows how this job can send even the strongest officer to the edge and beyond. Two years but ago... But you know, there's one thing you can do that a prisoner can do. You can quit and never come back. A prisoner can not quit jail and just not come back at that given moment in time. He joined the Winston Green Care Team, which offers support to staff in crisis. 
Ewan, is that right? What's that? Well, I understand you was involved in an incident yesterday. Yeah. Yes. But that also boils down to mental too. Prison officer Ian Allen has been assaulted by an aggressive prisoner and needs to talk about it and offload all the conflicting emotions. Open the door to have a chat with him, to try and calm him down, and de-escalate it. Whereupon he came forward at Officer Alcock and tried to attack him. Uh, we then decided to take him down with the CNL techniques and he elbowed him in the face. No, oh, she's out of the Amongst others, yes, yeah. the big egg on the eye that has gone then. Right. Uh, Quit! Well, it was a shock, because we were trying nice. to explain it to him, and we were going, well, it was dead. I get why they don't quit. It's like a sense of pride to a certain extent, or, or you want to see if you're going to prevail mentally through it. Like, you don't want to let anything impede you from doing your job or like, oh man, I quit because I got, you don't want that in your mindset, but man, give it a go. Then if a month later you still scared or you still thinking about it, man, you gotta go, man. Yeah. It's possible, when it comes from now. So be smart. And massively unpredictable. <coughs> just what this place is. I was lit and that just didn't seem to me. It doesn't, it, it, it's like, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do to try and help them out at the times, they're just not interested. It, ma it makes you look at yourself and wonder what you've done wrong, or if there's any way you could have gone about the situation differently. you just got to carry on and shoot your legs and help. Now makes me wonder, like, like, where was he, where is he from originally? So, In the segregation unit, Glennis goes to check up on Patrick Bills. Because that's just my attitude as a Chicago person. How are you, like, Bills? You okay? No. What's up? No word, you okay. Sure. Yeah. Bills is back on his medication, but it can only achieve so much, and Glennis yeah. is in for a shock. What's happening? He's cut up again. Oh. You've done another one since? I've done it about half an hour ago. Oh my god. I'm here till nine o'clock. If there's any problems, before you do anything rash, have a chat. It's good to talk, isn't it? Yeah? That's a fact, man. Just the conversation sometimes will ease your mind. Yeah. Okay, what's my name? Nurse Until he can be trusted not to harm himself or others, Bills will have to be kept in segregation. They didn't clean him up? Officers have to laugh when they can, as they're never far from the next incident. As suicide prevention officer, Julie has to keep a close eye on her prisoners. Is this your first time in prison? Mm. No. I dropped a video two hours and 49 minutes ago. It has 1,291 views. It's pretty good for a channel my size. I'm proud of y'all, man. Y'all make this shit worth it, for real. Because you got to remember, a lot of these documentaries, I do not get paid for. I just sit here and watch hours, hours, hours of them. I don't get a dime <laughs> from from the ad revenue or the commercials. So do not be going to me. It'd be going to the original person that uploaded it. So just y'all watching it and the like button means a lot to me. Appreciate that. Have been in before? Most deaths in custody happen at the start of a sentence when new prisoners are at their most vulnerable and confused. So Julie set up an insider scheme where old inmates pass on survival tips to the new boys. You get a breakfast pack in there, I'll see what we'll give you. She's always on the lookout for recruits, and she thinks Dexter Tarr has what it takes. Well, six foot nine, what the hell? Tall as hell. What's that safe <laughs> Tarr's an old hand at the prison game. He's on his second sentence. He's an agoraphobic who's kept himself to himself. Oh, but Julie who? thinks he'd make a good insider. Hello. Take a seat in my makeshift office. Wait, so she want well, him right, to... Then. Um, I'm going to ask you something. Just okay. a question. If the answer's no, don't worry about it. 
since you've been on here as a cleaner, you've been doing a good job. All the officers have said how well you work. Harris is one of the insiders. He's asked if he can move on. He wants he wants to transfer on. Um, so obviously I've got to look for somebody to fill his shoes, so to speak. And I wonder whether you'd be interested in having the job. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll You've settled in and you've got yourself quite yeah. comfortable here, haven't you, Ned? Yeah. It gives you something extra to do. And you're helping the new people come in at the same time, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah? All right, All right then? Yeah. Look what I've got! Oh, I've got yeah. a little show for you there. Look. Thinking of me. Yeah, because it's hot to wear that sweatshirt. Yeah. So there you go. Yes, yeah. All right. Thanks. OK. All, right, thanks, All set with his natty new uniform, Tar gets thrown straight in with his first inmate. We'll get used to it in here. It takes a couple of days to get into it, but it's like, it's like a routine. Oh, OK. So he's a prisoner that's already in... Obviously, he's a prisoner that's already insider. That's... I don't know what I... Anyway, so he talks to the new prisoners that are coming in and tries to get them as ready as they can ever be. <laughs> okay, I get it, okay. So the everyday thing is automatic, you're like autopilot. You know, you know everything, you know. You know when your door's going to be open, what your door's going to be open for, and all that. It's easy, it's easy to get into. But it doesn't matter how many times you've been to jail, like it's your first time, but everybody... I have the same feeling when they come back into jail after a while, like, you know, it's like, oh no, what, what is people going to be like in it? It's always different people in jail all the time. You get some nutcases in jail, but it's very rare to get them now. You know, so. All right, we'll ask for a listen. OK. Who did you think it was? Oh, it's easy. It can be nerve-wracking sometimes, though, speaking to people that you don't know, can't it? It can be, but it depends. Like, you know, when you see they're scared of that. Mm. Okay. You find it easier, then? I find then. it easier to talk to. And you've enjoyed we've all, it? We've all been in the same boat. Exactly. Been, That's why it's so good for you doing yeah. the role. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. OK. okay Thanks, Miss. Shoot her. Oh, yeah. That's more medication. <laughs> On top of all his other daily duties, Percy hands out medication to prisoners who are sick. He's a walking pharmacy, juggling pills for everything from epileptic fits to headaches. Is the headache going with this? Exactly. Hello, Percy. Julie's fooled by Percy's laid-back attitude, but despite appearances, he's rushed off his feet. There's 19 nurses at Winston Green looking after 1,400 inmates, and as a senior nurse, Percy has the unenviable task of making sure every shift is covered. So he juggles pills and people. I think two people are off sick. Twelve. So I can't wait for the new stuff to start coming out, man. Like the brand new stuff like these documents. I don't even know if they do this type of stuff no more, but they should really get back on it because like prison after COVID, prison during COVID, like that shit would be bangers. Nothing but bangers. And it needs to be like out there. Mm. You need me to put my hands in and get things going. So I'm just trying to make sure that all the areas covered right now. Right, so I put that on top of there. Hoping to ease the pressure, Percy's employed a new nurse, Daryl Seeley. He's been here for six weeks and he's still trying to find his way around the maze of prison routines. Right. I'll be out there and if you think you're unhappy or you're not sure, you just could give me a little shout out. 1,400 prisoners, <coughs> and knows how many pills. Getting the right meds for the right inmates is like playing Sudoku in the dark. Yeah. I've never played Sudoku in the light, so I don't even know what that is. Sorry, guys. What's your name? Daily. Daily. I can't even actually highlight your name, Daily. New boy Daryl's a prime target for crafty inmates to confuse him in the hope of getting extra drugs. Next, where are you having this pain? My legs. Right, and how long have you been having this pain? I've been having it for years. I've, I've, had, I've stabbed in the legs, running. 
Right. And you think if I give you some paracetamol, that will help? If you have been I'm having... I want the paracetamol because I'm getting a flu. So what exactly do you want me to give you now? Paracetamol. So you want some paracetamol? Yes, please. And what that will be for? That will be for the pain? Yeah. For the pain, and plus I'm getting a flu. Paracetamol helps the flu, do not it? Yes, but, but basically, if, you, if, if you're getting the flu, you might want to see the doctor put in a request for that. About, it'll take me about two months to, for to see the doctor. Every time I put in to see the doctor, it takes me a long, long time. Right. The doctor don't just see you here. You have to wait for months in there and there in the doctor. It's 1,400 prisoners in there. All right. Okay, then. How's he doing? Good. The understanding is getting on there. Slowly but surely. That's right. Yes. <laughs> well, there we are. There you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> but to be of any use to Percy, Daryl will have to make the grade. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Underwood? Morning. Good morning. Hello, young lady. What's happening, Mr. Yu? Not too much. Busy. For Colin, prison's a family affair. Two years ago, he tempted his stepdaughter, Subira, into the service. She works in the records department. Oh, okay. Yeah. How are you? How are you? <laughs> That's the stepdaughter? Phone. We had a chat. She's invited herself over for lunch. To whose house? No, no, no. Today. But hey, for some reason, I knew he was down for. I knew it. I knew it. Coming to yours? No, it's coming over here. I knew he liked to dibble and dabble in the black forest. Yeah, I knew okay. it. Okay. Oh, dinner time? Yeah. What time? Are you going over? I don't usually, but what time should you come in? About 12. Yeah, yeah, I'll come over then. Over the mess? Yeah, I'll come over. Oh, you are. Well, I think your mother's plan is that you're paying. Is it? Yeah. I'll stay here then. And if these get back a bit earlier, you can get there a bit okay, earlier, Mr. Fine. Lloyd. You'll try our best as quick as we can. Okay. We know you don't do too much in the gym. <laughs> Aaron, we can see that you work out, but you know, Chris, I think, just comes down to share the showers with you. Share the showers with you. Mr. Lloyd, you get changed in your sweating buckets already, just from getting changed. <laughs> <laughs> That's because this body's a temple. <laughs> Remember, it's a temple, not a room, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I'll see I'm you later. Have a nice day. All right. Quite good, don't they? What's this? Spicy cabbage. Spicy cabbage? Oh, shit. Fish with gravy. Oh, that Mikey B, if you're watching this, I record on Twitch without being live sometimes. Because. Y'all deserve when I'm live my full attention. You know what I'm saying? And right now, I can't give my full attention because I'm listening for my daughter. I'm playing, I'm watching this. And, I, uh, and a lot of things are going on that y'all just don't see. <laughs> and at the end of the day, y'all deserve to have my full attention. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, when I'm live on Twitch, I'm live. I'm interacting with y'all. Like, even when I'm done with a video, I'm still on here for hours. And I don't have that type of time. <laughs> right, not right now, at least. Soon, I'm going to be putting my daughter in daycare. So soon, I'll have that time. I'm not usually late. No, but it seems late today. Yeah, because you was going to be late anyway. I was it? You was. <laughs> it's not the world's greatest chat-up line. Fancy lunch in prison? But Colin's wife, Sharon, a local nurse, knows the score. They've been together for eight years. Come on, then. Let's have some dinner. When we actually first met, uh, we met at the, uh, the Tower Ballroom. I thought he was a member of the National Front. Because he looks very... <laughs> no, you shouldn't stereotype, but as a race, we do stereotype people. Yeah, we did do. But he's not really. <laughs> <laughs> You remember, you remember that first time oh. Carl Wally met me, didn't he? Yeah. You're right. Carl was a governor here. Knew I was seeing Sharon. We couldn't believe when he walked in. He says, how can you be going out with such a beautiful woman? He was absolutely gossip. Yeah. I said, well, <coughs> also because I'm a good looking bloke. Yeah. I think you are. So do I think I am as well. <laughs> I think you are. You're, you're lovely, really, are you? When we first met and we first lived together, if an incident had happened at work, Colin would come in and sort of stomp about the place, which I totally and utterly disagreed with. 
I sat him down and I said, if there is something wrong or you've had a bad day, let's talk about it and let's hear our problems. Don't walk around puffing and puffing because you'll, you'll suffer with high blood pressure. <laughs> if you're a prison officer at work and you're a husband and a father at home, and that's where it should be. But it's not always easy or no, that not simple to, that. to, to but, take the one out of the, the yeah. equation, is it? But you've got somebody you can speak to and offload yeah. on to really. Yeah. So. I am now and I accept it. I believe I've made a good decision. And I believe you've made a I good decision? i picked well. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that one, won't I? Oh, well. Twice a day, a new bunch of inmates arrive fresh from court. OK. Their life in the outside world is about to become just a memory. They pass through reception, where their details are recorded and their personal belongings, including photographs, are confiscated and searched. The nurses are there to assess the prisoner's medical needs. 85% of inmates have existing addiction problems, and forced cold turkey is about to begin. So Percy and Glennis have to decide the best way to get them through it. So how are you today? Uh, got the DTs, that's all. The DTs? Yeah. You detoxing for alcohol? Yeah, I'm an alcoholic. Can I ask how old you are? 28. You only use heroin? Yeah, I'm an alcoholic. I said he was 28! Uh, got the DTs, that's all. The DTs? Yeah. You detoxing for alcohol? Yeah, I'm an alcoholic. Can I ask how old you are? 28. You only use heroin. I gotta see a front view of him because from the side he looked 48. Not 40, maybe 38. Where do you inject? Right, can you tell me how much alcohol? This is a very important question. How much alcohol? This is gonna be, this answer is gonna be. You drink. Tom, I'm gonna go to the Tom, I'm gonna go to the Tell me how much alcohol you drink. Time I wake up to the time I go to sleep. And you take it. So from when he wake up to when he go to sleep, is that what that man just said? And that's the effects it has on you. That man look double his age. Holy yikes. Tell me how much alcohol you drink. Tom, I wake up to the time I go to sleep. And you're taking heroin, 80 pounds per day, and crack, 30 milligrams. Yeah. Still using drugs? Do you drink plenty of alcohol? Yeah, I do like my beer. Every day you drink alcohol? I drink, I drink beer every day. How many? 12 cans of turnip soup. Say it again? 12 cans of turnip soup. Yeah, but Jonesy, 12 cans is plenty of money, you know? I know it is. And then because they're also suffering, with epilepsy. epilepsy. But I don't mix alcohol with them. Beer is no longer an option. Paul Jones was in Winston Green five years ago, and he's back, pending a court appearance next week. What are you in for? Sorry about that. I'm at, at the moment, I'm on remand mm -hmm. for a fray, carrying a weapon, threatening what? to petrol bomb people's houses. Why, Jonesy? Tell me why are you doing that? Because I've been under too much drink and too much pressure by my partner. How are you feeling now? How are you really? At the moment, yeah. I feel like punching something. You feel like punching something? Something. I didn't say a person. I just feel like punching something, like a punch bag or something. But it's attacked me, anger out. Okay. But it's me, I'm fault of me. Yeah. You remember, we are here to help, to help you yeah? defuse that anger. Yeah. You have to take care of yourself. Remember, this is one life. All I've got to think of is one person. I don't think of myself first. You better start loving and yourself, Jonesy. The person I think of is in that, pi in that picture and I want Okay. It. So who is the person in the picture? In that picture, she's 19 months old. It's my youngest kid. OK. Well, then you have a reason to live for. Yeah, I have got a reason. So therefore... That reason I have. Exactly. So therefore... St stop taking my medication, cut Lovely. down on my alcohol. Thank you. Any human will get fed up, you know, seeing somebody coming over, over and over again. But you must give them back the service. You never give up. Because sometimes it's parents that give up with them peer peer group have given up on them that's why they like this so they are coming now for help you have to say yes I will take you up again forgive and continue the journey again
All prisoners are allowed to keep some of their possessions. In his 30s with four kids, Jones gets his photos back. It makes sense. That's, that's, that's nicer though. Gives you hope, man. Gives you a reason to live in there, man. Just the kids should have stayed out of there. Man. You couldn't help it, but you couldn't help it, but the worst part for me is my daughter. Because she's only 19 months and if I'm locked up for her birthday, I don't know what I'll do. I don't want to be here, but at the end of the day, I did the time. I did the crime, you do the time. That's the way I say it. I've done it. If I'm here, I do my time, get my head down, keep myself to myself. If I get a job, I get a job in here. If I don't, just lie on my bed and just doof, just lie there until my sentence is over. And I have my dinners and my breakfast and all that, same time as everybody else. Morning, Everything cool? Like all staff, there's never time to rest for Glenys. Along with running to alarm bells and treating prisoners' coughs and colds, she's also in charge of the hepatitis clinic. Weather's changed. Occupational hazard in a jail, I'm afraid. Like less than three minutes the left. Staff what are we? to sort out their own vaccinations, but the prisoners oh. get their jabs for free. Well, it's one per. Oh. Right, this is some information about hepatitis B. Yeah? Yeah. I need you to consent. So that means you're giving me permission to do Wayne this. Mercer is new to prison life. He might be a hard man outside, but in here, a little prick is too much to bear. If you have a problem with it, look away. Because the worst thing that could happen is that you faint. Because, you know, then I'll have to label you that you've got a yellow streak running down the back. What does that mean? Come on now. If you faint on me, what does right, that mean? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not good for your rep in here, is it? I don't care about no rep. <laughs> Just let <it> go home. <laughs> Shit. It's not the hole of the needle, don't be afraid. I feel a little scratch in here now. Right, the needle's in. Relax. <laughs> like it's all hurt. Relax, the needle's in. You're not going to feel another prick now. And you're bleeding. I thank you. You take care. Another prick now. This how I really be out there. Why you run from? Why you run from? Then yeah, get in prison, get a hepatitis shot, look like this. <laughs> and you're bleeding. It's tough. You take care. It looks like any normal doctor's surgery. But here the nurses are under constant pressure. The patients could turn nasty at any second. Was it last week or the week before I was told? I'm going to spit in your face, nurse. Is what the one inmate says on that wing out there. I says, hold on a minute, I'm coming round for you to spit in my face. I'm coming round. You know, I was just shocked. You're gonna spit in my face. I said, let me just explain something to you. Culturally, you spit in my face. Mm, 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 mm. It's not gonna go down very well because you <laughs> spit on something you disregard. Yeah. You know what I mean? No cap. That wasn't insult in the first place. Culturally, you still have yeah. One of these cards. I think I lost it. Let me tell you, you won't be getting another. Yeah. Yeah. So the what, third what one. Time shall I keep it for the rest of my life or take it to my grave? Abdullah. <laughs> <laughs> The nurses are conscious that the prisoner's looks can be deceiving. Glenys' next patient, Abdullah, is no pacifist. This mild-looking man has a string of asbos. <laughs> Abdullah, please. I'll have to close my eyes. OK, go on, please. All right. Just relax. You've had two already. I didn't hurt you then, did I? No, no, no. Right. Really. Time is left. It's like okay. five seconds left. Is it in? Yeah. All right? Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> 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 Finish with you then. Right. See you, Ralph. Cheers. All right. This was very enlightening. Very strange at times, I must say. 
But uh, I guess TLO, leave a like, comment. A like, more importantly. Comment if you want to ask me something. Or even just make a comment on the video or a comment on something I said. Y'all know what y'all, just, you know, do your thing. I'm gone.